Elsa Kawango. I'm from LVCT Health, a Kenyan NGO. We work um, here in Kenya in most of the counties, and we are one of the largest providers of HIV testing, uh, testing over 1.3 million people a year. I'm making this presentation on behalf of my colleague, Dr. Lilian Otiso, who couldn't be here, who is part of the Reach Out Consortium, consortium of eight countries looking at the role of closed community providers. And um, it's led by LSTM, uh, the chair of this session, to whom I shall refer all the difficult questions that I cannot answer. Now, Kenya has had a um, community health strategy since 2006. However, HIV services have, not, have been included, but they are not really explicit as part of the community strategy. Um, and the closed community providers in Kenya include community health volunteers, or CHVs, community health extension workers, commonly known as CHUs, and lay HIV counselors. And in our work at LVCT Health, we use all of this in delivering community HIV testing. This diagram that I'm not sure if you can see very well is a structure of the community health um, uh, structure in Kenya. The straight lines refer to supervision lines and the broken lines are referral, um, referral of clients. As you can see here, community HIV programs are vertical, largely under partner NGO projects. About 38% of testing in this country is conducted by lay counselors in community settings. But you can see that all community programs also link to the health facilities because that's where they refer clients after testing within the community. Uh, but lay counselors are actually not recognized as a cadre in the Ministry of Health in Kenya. So the rationale for this study was based on evidence showing that an integrated service delivery approach is feasible and is effective. The question, one of the questions that the study sought to answer is can integrated HIV be implemented within a holistic community health platform? It looked at the perspectives um, of policy makers at the macro level, perspectives of health managers at the micro, at the meso level, and community health workers and community members at the micro level, and I'll show you some of the findings from each of these levels. The study was conducted in Nairobi, Nairobi is one of the high burden counties in this country, and Kitui uh, community health units. Nairobi obviously an urban area, Kitui a rural area, but both sites were chosen because they had received home-based testing and counseling from lay counselors within the previous two years of the study. The design was qualitative uh, with focus group discussions and, uh, and uh, semi-structured interviews. And the participants, as I've mentioned, were from the macro, meso, and micro levels, including national level policy makers, country managers implementing HIV testing and community health uh, programs, and the C CHVs and other community health workers who are delivering the services, as well as the clients. Before I tell you about the findings, I don't know if you can see that photograph very well. That photograph is of a gentleman that works at LVCT Health. He's commonly referred to as the king of condoms. Lately, there's been a lot of discussion in, in the country and uh, even in other forums in, regionally about the decline in focus on condom programming. Um, Stanley works at LVCT Health. He is known all over this country because he wears condoms. He actually has various different suits made out of condoms that he wears and sachets and a huge, I don't know what you call that, a crown, like a king. So he's called the king of condoms. And he's one person who has individually taken on the challenge for increasing and promoting condom awareness in this country, in all corners of the country, and we highly commend the work that he has done, very well recognized by the Ministry of Health. Maybe some of you have seen him on YouTube. Online, if you haven't, have a look and see the kind of work that he does. So the results of the study, there was widespread support uh, for integration across all levels uh, from all the people that were interviewed. And there were three main key themes that emerged. One, that HIV services 
uh, is ongoing and integrated within the community strategy, but it is ad hoc. The first speaker talked about some of the community responses not being structured, not being systematic, and this is one of the things that emerged from this study. The second is that HIV services are driven by uh, vertical programs. Uh, largely by NGOs, and some of the results uh, or responses from the policy makers said what this does is that it creates a concentration where there are many NGOs and vacuums where there, are, there aren't as many NGOs delivering community services. And therefore, there's need for improved coordination of partners who are delivering services at the community level. The third theme was the support for integration, integrating home-based testing into community health. Across all the respondents, this, they thought that there is need to support the integration of um, home-based testing into community health services. So what are the opportunities and challenges of integration? Um, some of the opportunities are with the support that's available, that was reported at all levels by the community workers and the policy makers. The community workers also said that they would be willing to take on additional roles for HIV in a structured manner. However, there would be need for skills. Uh, they, 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 one of the opportunities is that there will be skills added to the existing cadres. So you're not creating anything new. They are already existing. They are already delivering some of these services. So the opportunity is to add on to those skills. Uh, there would be improved county coordination of partners and services, as well as holistic service provision at the household level, and this can also reach men and youth, who are one of uh, two of the priority populations identified for reach uh, with HIV testing because of low levels of testing reported within these populations. And they are also the two populations identified in various studies as target populations for self-testing. Some of the challenges that emerged, one was confidentiality, um, and this was a concern from the community. As you know, the community health workers will be drawn from the community. HIV, even with all the awareness and after all these years, is stigmatized, and so people are concerned about the confidentiality of the community workers and the lay councillors. Um, Miriam alluded to this in, earlier in this session about introducing, increasing the workload by introducing too many tasks for the community health workers and expecting them to report on all of this in a vertical manner with different tools to different people. Um, challenges in the supply chain were, were raised, um, potential for stock out of commodities. Sometimes we have stock out of test kits and this was raised as a concern in the study. So for self-testing, what are the opportunities in, the, in community health? Um, Professor Kawango has spoken about the, the opportunity for normalizing self-testing uh, within, uh, for normalizing self-testing, and this can happen with integration. Uh, utilizing existing platforms with minimal training, HIV self-testing can be added on to what the community health workers are already doing as an existing platform with uh, minimal additional skills. It also can reach the hard to reach men, adolescents, distant terrains where community health workers are operating. The community platforms can support linkage to care and there's also opportunity for them to earn a stipend if beneficiaries would pay for HIV self-testing as will be informed by studies on willingness to pay and this is something that's been done in other countries and has been shown to be beneficial. And in the context of this discussion and the previous meeting that was held here, I also wondered what could be the opportunities for expanding partner notification services with integration of self-testing in community settings. Um, at LV City Health, we've been conducting partner notification uh, services for the last about five years, and, and one of our case studies actually featured in the WHO guidelines. And so with self-testing integration into community level, how, what would partner notification also look like and how would it be done? But there are some threats and challenges to community HIV self-testing, including 
additional burden to community health workers. The knowledge and skills that would be required are not part of the basic package at the moment. Uh, there needs to be considerations for equitable coverage, as was expressed by the policy makers, to ensure that the services are not concentrated in some areas and others are deficient, as well as the quality of services that need to be tracked and monitored. Confidentiality is an issue to be considered and distortion of community platforms if this is retained as a vertical structure where um, within the, during the integration. There are some unanswered questions on integration of community health services that we need to think about. Um, and some of these are listed here. What are the health system impacts of integration in Kenya? Could HIV self-testing divert community health volunteers from core health uh, promotion and maternal child health tasks, which are the primary tasks that they have been given? And what is the potential for incentivizing community health volunteers for linkage in Kenya, where they are incentivized for linking clients that have been tested using this uh, integrated strategy? And what do we know about willingness to pay? Would people be willing to pay for these tests? I'd like to acknowledge the study team, the Reach Out Consortium, as well as the participants, and of course, Dr. Lilian Otiso, whose work I have just presented. Thank you very much.